In today's episode, we investigate the tragic case of a woman who believed she had found love again, only for her honeymoon to end in murder. This is the story of how a new husband's deadly secret resulted in a shocking and unimaginable betrayal. Emma Thompson, 45, had always been the picture of resilience and warmth. As a single mother from Boulder, Colorado, she had built her life around successfully managing a chain of veterinary clinics. After losing her husband 12 years earlier, Emma focused on expanding her business, becoming a respected figure in her community. With her clinics thriving and her daughter Kylie, 20, attending college, Emma felt she was finally in a place to focus on her own happiness. That's when Michael Green came into her life. In May 2019, Emma received a Facebook friend request from a man she didn't recognize. Michael, 47, introduced himself as a charming and successful software developer. He was caring, romantic, and made Emma feel like the center of his world. After years of dating disappointments, Emma felt like she had finally found someone who truly understood her. Within six months, the couple was engaged, and by July 2019, they were married. Emma's friends and family had mixed feelings about how quickly things progressed. Some were concerned, but Emma was deeply in love. Michael seemed perfect, loving, attentive, and eager to build a future together. She was especially touched by Michael's close bond with his elderly father, Edward Carter, 76, who Michael said had raised him alone as a university professor in San Francisco. Edward even joined them on their family-style honeymoon to a luxury cabin in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. To Emma, this showed Michael's strong family values, something she had always longed for. Kylie, however, remained unconvinced. She had always been wary of Michael and found his relationship with his father uncomfortably close. But Emma was so wrapped up in her dream of a new life, one filled with love, family, and adventure, that she brushed aside her daughter's concerns. The family-style honeymoon was intended to be the start of a perfect new chapter. Emma imagined long hikes, cozy dinners, and bonding moments with her new husband and daughter. But beneath the surface, a tragic fate awaited. Emma's dream of a life with Michael would soon become a nightmare, one she wouldn't survive. On the morning of July 15, 2019, the peaceful luxury of the cabin at Lake Tahoe was shattered. At around 7.30 a.m., resort staff member Lacey Martins knocked on the door of the cabin. She had been asked to deliver fresh towels to the honeymoon suite. When no one responded, she hesitated before entering, assuming the couple was still asleep. What she found instead would haunt her forever. Emma Thompson's body was submerged in the bathtub of the master bathroom. The tub was filled with water, and Emma's face was barely visible beneath the surface. At first, Lacey thought it was a terrible accident. The scene was eerily quiet, with sunlight pouring through the windows, casting a soft glow. But as Lacey got closer, she realized something was horribly wrong. Emma wasn't moving and the water had a strange, murky tint. Lacey froze, then quickly backed out of the room, trembling. Her hands shook as she reached for her phone to dial 911. Paramedics and local police arrived within minutes, but it was already too late. Emma was declared dead at the scene. Lacey, still in shock, told authorities she believed Emma had drowned in her sleep. Emma had been known to take prescription medication to help her rest, reinforcing the initial assumption that it was a tragic accident. However, upon closer inspection, detectives found signs that this wasn't just a simple drowning. The marble edge of the bathtub had a crack, and faint bruises were visible on Emma's neck. The water in the tub, though mostly clear, had small traces of blood near the drain. These clues immediately raised suspicions. Could something far more sinister have occurred in the Lake Tahoe cabin? Lacey, visibly shaken, informed officers that Emma's husband, Michael, had left the cabin earlier that morning, stating he was going for a run. But now, with Emma's lifeless body in the tub, the question arose, had she drowned accidentally or had she been killed, and why? When the Lake Tahoe Police Department arrived at the scene on the morning of July 15, 2019, they encountered a perplexing situation. Emma Thompson's body was submerged in the bathtub, with no apparent signs of struggle. Initially, lead investigator Detective Sarah Collins, known for her keen eye and methodical approach, led the initial crime scene examination. At first glance, it seemed like a tragic accident. Emma had a documented history of sleep issues and was dependent on strong medication, raising the possibility that she had drowned while heavily sedated. Empty pill bottles were found on the bathroom counter along with a nearly empty bottle of wine beside the tub. The evidence suggested she might have mixed alcohol with medication, which could have caused her to drown. However, as the investigation unfolded, not everyone was convinced this was an accident. Detective Collins and her team noted several disturbing details that pointed toward foul play. The crack in the marble tub suggested Emma's head had been struck with considerable force. There were also faint bruises on her neck, possibly indicating strangulation before being placed in the water. Forensic expert Dr. Lisa Kwan analyzed the bruising and found it highly suspicious, 
potentially suggesting Emma had been rendered unconscious before being submerged. However, not all experts agreed. The resort's doctor, Dr. Howard Brazia, argued that the bruises could have resulted from a medical episode, such as a seizure, which might have caused Emma to fall in the tub. Additionally, toxicology reports revealed that Emma had both alcohol and sleeping pills in her system, raising the possibility that the combination had caused her to lose consciousness and slip under the water. This division among experts complicated the investigation. While some believed the evidence strongly indicated homicide, Others suggested it could have been an accidental death, possibly related to alcohol, drugs, or a medical condition. Detective Collins was determined to uncover the truth, knowing that even the smallest detail could unlock what truly happened in the cabin that morning. Michael Emma's 47-year-old husband was the first person police questioned after her body was discovered. He had been out on a morning run when the resort staff found Emma's body in the bathroom. When he returned to find police at the cabin, Michael appeared deeply shocked and upset immediately asking what had happened to his new wife. Amidst sobs, he told investigators that Emma had been diagnosed with sleep problems years earlier and was reliant on prescription medications. He claimed that mixing the medication with the wine they had shared the night before might have led to her accidental drowning. Michael explained to detectives that Emma had often struggled with sleep, particularly due to the pressures of managing her business and planning their wedding. He mentioned how she regularly took prescription pills to help her rest. It's possible she just took too many, Michael suggested during his interview speaking calmly but with a hint of sadness. She wasn't always cautious about mixing her meds with alcohol. But as police dug deeper, they discovered that Michael had other reasons to be concerned about Emma's death. As her husband, Michael now had full control of her estate, including her thriving veterinary clinics, which were successful due to her reputation and loyal clientele. Without a prenuptial agreement, Michael stood to inherit everything. Investigators began to question if financial gain could have been a motive for murder. Detective Sarah Collins pressed Michael about his financial situation, asking how much he knew about Emma's assets. Michael quickly denied any interest in her money, insisting that their love was real. I loved her for her incredible heart. I don't care about her money, Michael stated keeping a calm demeanor throughout the interrogation. Despite his composure, detectives weren't convinced. In the days before her death, Michael had been seen making phone calls to Emma's financial advisors in Colorado. He claimed to police that he was helping manage Emma's business while she was on vacation, but the timing raised eyebrows. As the investigation progressed, Michael's carefully built image of a grieving husband began to fall apart, and detectives kept a close eye on him. The second person police focused on was Emma's daughter, Kylie Thompson. At 20 years old, Kylie had always had a strained relationship with her mother, which worsened after Emma married Michael. Family friends described Kylie as intelligent but troubled. She had long struggled with feelings of neglect as Emma's business grew, leaving her mother with little time for her. When Michael entered the scene, Kylie's resentment deepened. Kylie had accompanied her mother and Michael on the honeymoon but stayed in a separate cabin. She told detectives she had barely seen her mother or Michael during the trip aside from a tense dinner the night before Emma's death. Kylie recounted that her mother and Michael had exchanged tense words that night. Emma had been uncharacteristically quiet, and Michael appeared irritated. When police asked if she believed Michael had any involvement in her mother's death, Kylie didn't hesitate. He's only with her for the money, she said during her interview. He's been pressuring her for access to her accounts ever since they got engaged. Despite Kylie's strong feelings about Michael, she herself became a person of interest in the investigation. Police couldn't overlook that she also had reasons to resent her mother. The two had frequently argued over Emma's devotion to her business and, more recently, over Michael's place in their lives. Kylie admitted that she and Emma had been drifting apart in the months leading up to the wedding. During her interview, Kylie revealed another shocking detail. She claimed that Michael's father, Edward, had been making inappropriate advances toward her since the honeymoon began. Kylie tearfully recounted how Edward, who had joined them on the trip, started making lewd comments shortly after their arrival. She described how he had made inappropriate remarks about her body and even touched her inappropriately several times. He would find excuses to brush against me, she said, or he'd say things like, you're such a beautiful woman, you make me feel young again, she told police. Kylie said things escalated when Edward tried to enter her suite late one night, dressed only in a bathrobe, pretending he was checking on her. According to Kylie, she had confided in her mother the night before Emma's death, but Emma, overwhelmed by stress, didn't take immediate action. This revelation raised further questions about the family dynamics and shifted additional suspicion toward Edward. 
Though Kylie remained composed during her questioning, her strained relationship with her mother and the disturbing allegations against Edward left police with many unresolved questions. Was her animosity toward Michael enough to push her to commit murder, or was there more to her story? The investigation took an unexpected turn in mid-June of 2019 when detectives uncovered a shocking new piece of evidence. It was a warm day, typical of summer in Lake Tahoe, Nevada with vacationers enjoying the scenic surroundings. Police were combing through the resort's security footage, looking for any clue that could explain Emma Thompson's death. That's when they made a startling discovery. Emma hadn't drowned by accident, nor was her death simply a case of domestic violence gone wrong. As detectives dug deeper into the backgrounds of Michael and Edward, they uncovered a truth more twisted than anyone could have imagined. Security footage from the night of Emma's death showed her angrily entering Edward's room after what appeared to be an argument with Michael. What she found there would seal her fate. Police learned through witness interviews and additional surveillance footage that Emma had caught her husband, Michael, and his supposed elderly father, Edward, in bed together engaging in sex. This revelation was not only shocking, it unraveled the entire lie that Michael and Edward had been living. Michael and Edward were not father and son at all. In reality they were a married couple, partners in crime for over a decade. The two had made a living by conning wealthy, single, middle-aged women like Emma, posing as a father and son duo. They used their charm and carefully crafted backstories to gain their victims' trust, then slowly drained them of their finances. Edward, pretending to be the kind and frail older father, lent credibility to their scam while Michael played the romantic suitor, sweeping women like Emma off their feet with his charm and good looks. Police discovered that Emma had inadvertently stumbled upon their twisted scheme. She had uncovered their secret that night and threatened to expose them. Investigators believed this discovery was the motive behind her murder. Emma had always been a strong and independent woman, and once she realized she had been deceived, she likely confronted Michael and Edward. Fearing their entire con was on the verge of being exposed, Michael panicked. In a desperate bid to silence her, he attacked. The revelation of Michael and Edward's true relationship shocked both investigators and Emma's family. The pieces of the puzzle were beginning to fall into place, but the full story of what had happened that night still needed confirmation. Investigators now realized they were dealing with experienced con artists who had a lot to lose. With the discovery of Michael and Edward's secret relationship, Edward quickly became a prime suspect in Emma Thompson's murder. By June of 2019, detectives had uncovered that Edward, 76, was not the frail, kind-hearted father he pretended to be. He was a former B-movie actor turned con man with a long history of scamming wealthy, vulnerable women. Alongside Michael, his much younger husband, Edward had mastered the art of deception. He convincingly played the role of the helpless elderly man who depended on Michael for everything. He played the part so well that no one suspected a thing, but behind the mask was a ruthless partner in crime, equally responsible for Emma's murder as Michael. Michael and Edward were seasoned con men operating under false names and identities to scam wealthy women. Before targeting Emma, they had executed similar schemes across multiple states, leaving behind a trail of devastated victims. Their method was clear. Edward, posing as a compassionate elderly father figure, would introduce his son, Michael to vulnerable women. These women were typically successful, middle-aged, and often widowed or recently divorced, the perfect targets for their con. The duo preyed on their emotions gaining trust and affection before gradually draining them of their wealth. Public records revealed that they had met Emma online through a popular Facebook group for animal lovers. Social media played a central role in their strategy, as they carefully crafted their profiles to appear trustworthy and attractive. Michael, with his charm and good looks, quickly won Emma's heart, while Edward reinforced the con with his grandfatherly persona. Emma, who had built a successful career and accumulated substantial savings, fit their target profile perfectly. As the relationship progressed, she unknowingly transferred large sums of money into accounts controlled by Michael and Edward. Investigators estimated that over $500,000 had been siphoned from Emma's accounts in just six months. When police brought Edward in for questioning, he remained calm and collected, sticking to the story they had used for years, that he was merely Michael's father. However, with the discovery of their relationship and history of fraud, Edward's defense began to falter. He initially denied any involvement in Emma's death, claiming he had been asleep in his room at the time of the incident. But as investigators pressed further, Edward's lies started to unravel. They confronted him with evidence of their previous scams, proving that this wasn't the first time Michael and Edward had targeted a wealthy woman. Edward's demeanor shifted slightly under the pressure but he continued to deny knowing anything about the murder. He admitted that while they had defrauded people before, killing Emma was never part of the plan. Edward argued that he was too old and physically weak to have committed the crime himself, subtly shifting the blame onto Michael. Throughout his interrogation, Edward attempted to distance himself from the murder. Yet, 
police found it hard to believe that he wasn't involved in some capacity, considering his long-standing partnership with Michael. Edward's calm, almost detached attitude during questioning didn't sit well with detectives, and they suspected he was hiding more than he let on. As the investigation advanced, Edward remained a key figure, though it became increasingly apparent that Michael had likely taken the lead in the actual murder. Nevertheless, Edward's involvement in the larger scheme couldn't be overlooked, and police continued to investigate his role in Emma's death. On June 14, 2019, after weeks of gathering evidence, police officially identified Michael as Emma Thompson's murderer. Investigators had long suspected foul play, and it was Emma's discovery of Michael and Edward's true relationship that ultimately led to her demise. When she walked in on them having sex, Michael realized his scam was on the verge of being exposed. Emma's shock and fury threatened to unravel their entire operation. Michael and Edward had been running these cons for years, targeting wealthy, single, middle-aged women like Emma and robbing them of their wealth. When Emma uncovered the truth, Michael couldn't risk her blowing the whistle on him and his partner. In a desperate attempt to silence her, Michael attacked. First, he knocked her unconscious by slamming her head against the marble edge of the bathtub. Then, in a chillingly calculated move, he strangled her to ensure she wouldn't wake up. Afterward, Michael staged the scene to make her death appear as an accidental drowning, relying on her sleep issues and medication dependency to support his alibi. But investigators quickly saw through the facade. Forensic evidence, including the bruises on Emma's neck and the positioning of her body, didn't align with an accidental drowning. Michael's behavior also raised suspicions. He was calm, almost too calm as police asked more pointed questions. When investigators uncovered his true relationship with Edward and the string of cons they had left behind, the entire story began to unfold. On the morning of June 14th, police arrested Michael at the Lake Tahoe Resort. He didn't resist, in fact he seemed resigned to his fate, almost as if he had known it was only a matter of time. Edward was also taken into custody for his role in the con, though it was evident that Michael was the mastermind behind the murder. Emma's family, particularly her daughter Kylie, was devastated. While Michael's arrest brought some closure, it couldn't erase the profound sense of betrayal they felt. They had trusted him and he had destroyed everything. Emma's dreams of a happy new life were stolen, all for Michael's greed. The trial of Michael Green commenced in early December 2019, attracting little media attention. The prosecution, led by Assistant District Attorney Lisa Morales, 42, portrayed Michael as a ruthless conman who had manipulated Emma Thompson and ultimately killed her when she discovered his secret. Morales, known for her fierce courtroom style, focused on the evidence that Emma's death had been staged. She highlighted the bruises on Emma's neck and the forensic findings that contradicted Michael's claim of an accidental drowning linked to her sleep issues. Defense attorney Jonathan Crane, 57, took a different approach, arguing that Emma's death was indeed a tragic accident. Crane, known for his composed demeanor and measured arguments, pointed to Emma's long history of sleep disorders and reliance on medication, suggesting these factors made it plausible that she had slipped and fallen in the bathtub. He claimed that the bruising could have been caused by the fall, rather than by strangulation. Crane also sought to dismantle the prosecution's theory of Michael's motive, arguing there was no concrete evidence that Michael was financially desperate or trying to control Emma's assets. Throughout the trial, Emma's family sat quietly in the courtroom. Kylie, now 21, displayed little outward emotion her face a mixture of pain and disbelief as she listened to the details of her mother's final moments. Despite her past distance from her mother, the betrayal from Michael's lies and manipulation hit hard. Friends of Emma, some wearing custom t-shirts printed with her face, watched on in silent support. After three days of deliberation, the jury returned with their verdict. Michael Green was found guilty of first-degree murder. The courtroom fell silent as the judge sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Edward Carter, Michael's accomplice, was sentenced to 20 years for his role in the con but was not charged with the murder. For Emma's family and friends, the verdict brought some measure of closure, but the pain of her loss remained raw. The justice system had done its part, but nothing could erase the grief of losing Emma to such a cruel and senseless act. After the trial, the lives of those connected to Emma Thompson's tragic death diverged in different directions. Michael Green, convicted of first-degree murder, was sentenced to life in prison without parole. In court, Michael displayed little emotion as the sentence was read. He had consistently claimed his innocence throughout the trial, insisting that Emma's death was accidental. However, with overwhelming evidence linking him to a long-running con targeting multiple victims, the jury saw through his lie. Now, Michael spends his days in Nevada State Prison, far from the life of luxury he once led, where he had charmed and deceived wealthy women like Emma. Edward Carter, who posed as Michael's father but was actually his husband and partner in crime, was also convicted of fraud, conspiracy, and accessory to murder. Given his advanced age, 
76 at the time of the crime, Edward received a 25-year sentence, with the possibility of parole after serving half of it. His declining health and old age suggested he would likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. Throughout the trial, Edward's frail condition and role as the elder in the con garnered some sympathy, but the jury still held him responsible for his role in the scheme that led to Emma's death. For Kylie Thompson, Emma's 20-year-old daughter, life after her mother's murder was marked by trauma and sorrow. Her relationship with her mother had always been strained, but the shocking truths about Michael and Edward made the pain even more profound. During the trial, Kylie spoke about the sense of betrayal she felt, not only for her mother's murder but for the inappropriate advances Edward had made toward her. After the trial, Kylie returned to Colorado, moving in with her maternal aunt and starting classes at a local community college, trying to reclaim some sense of normalcy. Though the road has been difficult, Kylie has slowly begun to move forward, although the emotional scars from that summer of 2019 remain. Though the courtroom delivered justice, the aftermath of Emma Thompson's murder left a lasting impact on everyone involved. Emma had believed she had found love again, but her new husband concealed deadly secrets. In the end, her determination to expose the truth cost her life.